So today is our last day of Winging It's History Week, so we want to wrap it up by kind of talking about the steps that went into laying out Buffalo. I had headed over to Batavia to the Holland Land Office to check out this very historical museum and get a little bit of uh, information on what makes Buffalo, Buffalo. Today as we step back in time, we're learning what it took to take Western Europe from wilderness and frontier to the city that we love to live, work, and play in. And that story starts right here in Batavia. We actually ask them to close their eyes and imagine they're going back in time and to listen to the uh, wind blowing through the leaves and squirrels going through the underbrush and such. This was the frontier. There was nothing here when people came, when the Elkids came, except wilderness. You would find old growth timber that was so large around that four men licking hands could not reach around it. In order to parcel up this frontier, the land had to first be surveyed. Hired to take on this monumental task were Andrew, Joseph, and Benjamin Elcott. The Ellicotts were hired by the Holland Land Company, a group of Dutch investors. After the Treaty of Big Tree in 1797, to uh, survey the 3.3 million acres, which was originally owned by Robert Morris, the financier of the American Revolutionary War, who sold it to the uh, Dutch investors. Taking a tour of the Holland Land Office offers you a look at what surveying was like in the late 18th century. And as you can imagine, the equipment they used isn't as technical as those pieces used today. But what you might be surprised to learn is that Western New York was surveyed using a chain that only measured 66 feet long. There was 150 men that worked with the uh, mostly Benjamin and uh, Joseph. And they took meticulous notes. Uh, when you were buying a piece of land, you knew if there was hardwood forests on there, if it was land suitable for pasture lands, if there were rattlesnakes on your property. Uh, if you have streams suitable to build mills. Once the land was surveyed, it could then be sold at the Holland Land Office. We were the land brokers. People would come here, Mr. and Mrs. Smith would come here and buy their land and find out where exactly it was located and then go set up their farm. Joseph Falca was very liberal in his uh, dealings with people. Uh, land was approximately $2 an acre, but he would let them put down as little as a quarter. And then you'd, uh, and he was quite, in some ways he was quite liberal in letting people make their payments, but people also paid in wheat and in, uh, in commodities. Payment was not the only thing that made buying land different from today. The land itself also required more work to be suitable for living. Nowadays, uh, you don't necessarily have to go out and chop down the tree to build your house. Uh, when people uh, went out, there was nothing there, and one of the first things they had to do was clear the land uh, in order to make, uh, uh, make it uh, profitable. Taking a trip through the Holland Land Office will give any history lover a well-rounded look at what went into laying out Western New York, with a hint of why Batavia is so important to the story. When you first walk in and you turn to your left, uh, you walk into the land office room, and this explains the early uh, settlement of Genesee County uh, in Western New York, the, the purchase of Western New York. Then following through, you walk into our pioneer kitchen. Uh, you, f you see how people uh, prepared and lived in the early days of this area. Then across the hall, uh, you see our Native American exhibit. So for today, put down the history books and head over to Batavia, where history is still alive and on display at the Holland Land Office. I they also have a really great exhibit towards the back of a lot of military history in Western New York, so it's another thing you'll have to check out when you head over to the Holland Land Office. If you want more information, you can go to www.hollandlandoffice.com.